I want to mention that over this past, uh, from Wednesday until last night, I had the pleasure of going out to the big island of Hawaii, which I've done now for, I think, 13 of the last 15 or 16 years. They've done the Hawaii Songwriters Festival. Festival. It used to be the Kauai Songwriting Festival. Um, my friend uh, and longtime taxi member Charles Brotman and his lovely wife Joni and their daughter Julia and uh, Charles' sister Jody are, are the brains of the operation on that gig, and, and they do a really, really good job. I was moderating, I think I moderated three or four panels, and one of them was a music supervisor panel. And there were some big damn deal music supervisors on the panel. Um, and one of them uh, was a very smart, very likable um, young lady. And I say young because she was younger than I am, which almost everybody is. Uh, and at some point, the supervisors were being really um, generous in what they were saying. You know, I'll take a copy of that um, quite frequently um, on this panel. And... I asked uh, this one lady in particular, I said, really, uh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to get this exactly right because it was several days ago now and I'm a little dingy today. The bottom line is that she said, well, I don't need it right now, but I will always take weird, quirky, this kind of, that kind of music. And I said, and what do you do with it? And she said, well, I put it in folders on my desktop. I hoard it. And I went, you hoard it, eh? And the other people on the panel said, yeah, we all hoard stuff. And for me, this was an epiphany. Not that I didn't know this already, but it was an epiphany on your behalf. Because what it told me was the long unanswered question that so many of you have and have had for the 26 years this company has been in business, which is, okay, so you forwarded my music to a music supervisor on this $30,000 thing, and I haven't heard anything. And I know that in your mind's eye, for some, maybe many, maybe not all of you, but a lot of people, you know, right up here in their old noggin, they think, oh yeah, they can visualize this music supervisor sitting there waiting. Can't wait to get that music from Taxi. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. They're going to send me seven, eight things, five things, three things, 20 things, whatever the number is. And mine's going to be the one that's going to stand out and it's going to end up in that commercial or that TV show or whatever. Um, there are several entities, maybe many entities, that are pitching music to these folks. So it could be, um, uh, as a matter of fact, this one young lady said uh, they recently had something, and I hope I'm getting this right, uh, but I think I am. She said that they listened to 4,000 pieces of music for one trailer that they worked on, and that that wasn't all that unusual. So it's 4,000 pieces of music. Now, while you might think, Oh my God, those, those odds are overwhelming. I'm never going to end up in a trailer because I'm one of 4,000. Um, you know what? The only way to beat the odds are to, is to get your music out there into many places. Um, it's not like the lottery. People love to say it's the lottery, like it's a total game of chance. It's not. If you end up on their desktop or their hard drive or in their headphones or their speakers, uh, there's an assumption on their part that the music is of high enough quality that somebody like Taxi or Publisher or whomever sent it to them. So the luck part is already taken out of the equation. Now it's a matter of do they hear it and think it'll work in that trailer or that scene or that commercial or whatever it is they're working on. Um, so yeah, there's always a little bit of luck because it may be that the person that they're trying to please because the supervisor doesn't always or doesn't even usually make the final call. Maybe luck comes into it when the person who does make the final call is a big fan of Creedence Clearwater and they hear something that works with picture, works in the context of that ad, that trailer, that scene, what have you, and somehow reminds them uh, of Credence. And because of their own personal taste, they go, yeah, that's the one that works best to picture for me. So there may be a little bit of luck involved, but it has to begin with quality, and it has to begin with does it work in the scene, because they're not going to take something and put it in a scene if it hurts the scene or doesn't help the scene. They're looking for stuff that moves the story forward, that m engages the viewers more. They're not necessarily, uh, not often, looking for a piece of music that's so spectacularly good that the viewers are going to go, wow, that piece of music is amazing, and pull the viewers out of the story. 
again, whether it's in a trailer or in a commercial or a scene in a TV show or a film, they want the viewers to be totally immersed and sucked into that story. So they need music that helps them do that versus noticing the music in most cases. So the fact that she said the word hoarding to me was key. And I dug a little deeper with the other panelists. And I said, so you guys, uh, you know, you guys are all hoarding. And I'm not talking about the kind of hoarding that you see on TLC, and those uh, goofy reality shows. They said, no, we all do it. So what that means, because I kept digging deeper for you guys, is that they create folders. They've all got folders. Every single music supervisor worth their salt in the industry has folders probably on the desktop of their computer. And the folders will be like, quirky music, blues, country, whatever, all kinds of different folders for all kinds of different genres. And what do they do with those folders? So let's say that uh, that lady uh, that I was doing the digging on the hoarding with listens, um, she's looking for something uh, quirky and horrific for um, a trailer that's kind of a, a, a dark comedy about people digging up graves, let's say. Okay, so she needs dark grave digging music that's a little quirky and funny and comedic. And so while she's listening, and they did all agree, by the way, that they literally listen to seconds. So if any of you have the fantasy that they're listening to your entire song or entire instrumental and sitting there grooving to it, go, wow, this person's a great songwriter. This person's a great composer. The odds are against you for that. They are literally spending a few seconds to go, mm, contender or not a contender. And for the stuff that is a contender, that goes into a contender's file. Now, all the other stuff, while they're finding stuff that is not a contender, they may hear something that they really like and know that someday, for some other purpose, I'm probably going to have a need for that. So what do they do? They drag it into the quirky file, they drag it into the blues file, or they drag it into the country file. So when you get forwarded for something that's a $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, $55,000 taxi listing, and you don't ever hear anything, it doesn't mean that it's dead in the water. Now, do I want you doing this? Sitting by the phone, waiting to hear from them? No, and they all chuckled when I said that. They said, no, absolutely, that doesn't happen. It's extremely unlikely that we're gonna call them up and say, wow, I loved your quirky piece of music and I put it in my quirky folder, so someday, three and a half years from now, when I'm working on another trailer and I need quirky music, I'm gonna pop that open and I'm gonna pick your thing. They don't know, but it is on their desktop in their quirky folder, and then I ask the obvious question. Do you have to assume that it made it, when you get forwarded by taxi for one of those upper echelon listings, let's call them, um, and you don't hear anything back, is it a fair assumption that you ended up in one of their desktop folders? No. Is it a, a decent chance? Yeah. Uh, by decent chance, I mean 10, 20, 30 percent chance? Yeah. Probably not unrealistic because the music we sent to them has already been screened by our screeners and it has a certain level of quality already. It's not like it's garbage or piss poor demos. You know, it's pretty darn good music, really good music. So there is a reasonable chance it's going to end up in one of their folders for some other potential future use. Now, do they want you to take it off the market? So let's say you send it in for a taxi listing um, you get forwarded and you don't hear anything. In it. Let's say the listing's got a 24 or 48 or 72 hour deadline. Pretty fair assumption that shortly thereafter, that music supervisor's got to make his or her decision. So if you don't hear anything in a week, you know, are, are you out of the, the game? Probably for that thing. Now, could you end up in one of their folders? Could be, like I said, 10, 20, 30% chance. The music's good and they see a potential future use? Probably. Maybe. So then, do you take it off the market? That's the big question. Do you make that assumption, make that leap of faith that you're sitting in their folder? And, boy, oh boy, you better not pitch it for anything else. And they all chuckled at that. They said, hell no. Pitch it everywhere you can, every chance you have. And I said, well, what about if three and a half years from now, you go into that quirky folder and you pull that song out and you play it against picture for that trailer you're working on, and you love it, 
and you reach out to that taxi member in Ishpeming, Michigan and say, hey, Betty Jo, I love that piece of music. I'd love to put it in my trailer. And you, being Betty Jo, say, oh, shoot, I'm so sorry. I already you know, gave that to a publisher. I, I, I don't control that anymore. Um, a couple things could happen. Number one, they could say, well, I love it so much, I'd like to know which publisher has it so they can reach out to the publisher. Or whatever else happens to the music, there just isn't, um, you don't need to keep it off the market. Pitch it everywhere you can. Um, because they know that there's a reasonable probability if it's been more than a month or two or three or six or a year or whatever, that, that the music may be tied up elsewhere. They're cool with that. So there you go. That is what hoarding is all about in the context of music supervision. And there you have it. Yeah. Woo!